Now, if we wanted to get the probabilities associated with these z-scores, we can use an equation in Excel to find the p-values. Now, this p-value is specifically going to calculate for us by default the area to the left of our score. Okay? So if you remember, if you think, you picture the distribution, right? Uh, you have tails on the left and right and the nice peak in the center. This is going to calculate the area on the left low side of your score, which means for low scores, this should be a smaller number. For big positive values, you have a lot more area to the left, so that p-value is going to increase. It is basically a percentile score. So this will tell us the percentile for the given score, right? Uh, so let's see how that looks. Okay, what we're going to do here is equals norm z with an s dist. Okay, and then you need to select your standardized score, which we've computed z scores here. That's all you need. Now this is the area to the left. Okay, now if we wanted that as a percentile rank instead of as a probability, we could say percentile, right? And we can just do equals this value and tell it that this is a percent. So this is the number, the z-score here of negative 1.93 is at the 2.7 percentile. Okay, now we can complete all of these again just by double clicking. When I get this black X, it's going to copy that formula appropriately and then I can double click to do the same thing here and you'll see that as the scores go up, people are at higher percentile ranks, which makes perfect sense. So we get up to the highest values, and we're going to see that they're near the top of the percentile ranks. We're going to stop where our data actually ends. So the data ends right here at the 98.85 percentile. Again, there's no data in those columns, so it's pretending that's a zero. We're just going to delete those for clarity. So you see that we basically end with someone at height that is the 99th percentile for our data, right, based on the z-score. And we started at someone that was at the 2.7 percentile. So there you go. You can use this to get a z-score and a percentile rank associated with that. Now, of course, this is the area to the left. If I wanted to get the area to the right, so this would be how many scores, what percentage of scores are bigger than your score as opposed to below your score. So the percentile rank is the percentage of scores below your Z value. This is going to be the probability, the proportion above, so to the right. So if we got a percentile for that, it is the percent of people above your value. So obviously it will just be this value minus 1. So we can just do 1 minus this probability value. And this is the area to the right of that score. Okay. That's all you've got to do. And if you wanted to, you could get this as percent above, right? And then understand that this percentile is in fact percent below. Okay. So 97% of people, if we convert this, we want to make it percentiles, we can do that. Select this value and just tell it it's a percent. I'm going to add on the extra decimal values. So 97.3% of people are above age 11. That's what that says, right? So that's the distribution of standardized scores we would expect based on this data, okay? And so there you go, that's the other side. So this is the right side of the curve. This is the left side of the curve. This is amount of scores above your score. This is percent of scores below your score. So this is how you can use Excel to quickly get standardized scores, percentiles. Now we've looked at skewness and kurtosis before, but I'm just going to remind you here how can you do this. You can get an easy command for skewness equals skew. And then again, select your data. So the skew for age, we're going to pick data in this range. There's our skewness statistic, right? And we can get kurtosis with Kurt B2 E8831, 
there you go. So that's the skewness and kurtosis for our age data. These are our Z scores. These are the area to the left or proportion below. This is the percentile rank or percent below. This is the proportion to the right or proportion above. And this is the percent above your given Z score. So there you go. Major things for the homework. You can do them all in Excel. You've got Z scores, probability values, and here we have skewness and kurtosis.